Hello folks, it is day one of the suspension transplant project and of course it's raining. So, step one, remove the rear axle and the fuel tank and anything connected to that. The rain's not gone off, so it looks like just need to suck it up, get on with it. So I think I'll start with the fuel tank, which is, comes out through the trunk floor. May as well do that first because once I jack it all up, it's going to be harder to reach in there. And of course, the very first thing I'm going to do, remove the battery. Mm-hmm. Now we can remove these 10mm bolts that are holding this panel in. It's kind of half the trunk floor. I did it this way so that I could have access to the fuel tank if I ever needed it, which I now do. So as you can see, now get access to remove the fuel line the fuel filler pipes, breather, filler, sender unit, earth, and then I can lift the tank out and then get on with the next step. And if you're wondering why I'm removing the fuel tank to do a rear axle, it's just going to help things. It's, it's kind of in the way to remove the axle and also I'm going to be doing a lot of grinding, welding in that area. And I also want to be welding up these holes at the back. There's a lot of welding and grinding involved, so may as well get the tank out. It's not like Bugsy's going anywhere for a while. Right, onward. So I remember I had these funky devices that are supposed to clamp around hoses to stop fluid getting out. So I'll use one for the fuel line, one for the brake line. Can't actually reach the brake line from here, so I'll be using one underneath. I'll give it a shot. seems to work. It's not a pressurised line, I wasn't expecting much to come out, but I just didn't want even vapour coming out of there. Right, let me get all the other bits and bobs disconnected. Mmm, love that smell. All hoses and wires disconnected. Now let's see if I can get this out. Hopefully it's not seized in place. Of course, it's half full of gas as well. I might uh, just jack it up from underneath with a bit of wood. Because at the moment I've got nothing to grab. It's a perfectly square, well, rectangle box. There's no, like, grab handles. Yeah. Back in a sec. Why do we never these, do these jobs when the gas tank's empty? Right, 
be nice if the rain went off. I'm not going to hold my breath. Uh, check the weather report. The rain's not going off, like ever. So, better go on with it. Chalk up the front, jack up the back, get some axle stands underneath, remove the wheels, etc. etc. Next up will be the flexi brake line. I don't want to put any pressure on that little brake line and that means that all the, the hard pipes can remain in place. Although I do actually have to replace the one on the other side because it got pinched at some point. Another problem with this four leg nonsense. So once that's off, then I'll remove the drive shaft bolts then I can start removing the four links and the shocks. Oh, still have my still have my um, e-brake cable to remove as well. So better get on with that. Okay, brake pipe is disconnected. Drive shaft is disconnected. E-brake cables are disconnected. Okay, um, big bolts now the four link bolts. I'll just take the ones off the axle at the moment. I don't need to take the ones off the body. So four of them. What am I missing? Oh yeah, the shocks. Okay, big bolts, big ratchets, big spanners. Oh, and I remembered. I've taped up my U-joint so I don't lose all those little needle bearings. So that's tucked up out of the way. Okay, so. I need to remove those bolts, shock bolts, and where are we? Yeah, those bolts. And then the axle will be free. So the coilovers are off. I'm just gonna lower the, the axle down a bit to give me better access to these nuts and bolts. There shouldn't be anything preventing it from dropping down now, other than the four links. That's better. Right, so I can get those bolts out, those bolts out, and the whole thing should come out. I better get something to put under the, the drums, I guess. Nearly there. So I've removed these bolts. I've removed the nuts from the lower bolts, but the bolts are still in. Because as soon as I take all these bars off, the whole diff's gonna tilt down like that, and I don't want to damage the, the yoke. So, I am going to get a couple of wheelie devices, one under, one under each side, and then when I lower that down, it can rest on them, and hopefully I can pull the whole thing out without too much hassle. Hopefully.
yes, it's still going to pivot forward, isn't it? I'll put something under the yoke. That was easy. So let's have a look at this bad boy. So I will be cutting these off all the way. I'm not going to. I'm not going to make this like perfection. I just want it to chop off. I don't want it to be grinding too close to this because the less heat in these tubes, the better. But I will need to grind away this section a little bit for the underside where the axle perches are going to get welded to so grind chop this whole section here needs to get chopped the brake pipe location's fine that's that's okay i don't know why i bothered putting this on it's it's leaked all over the driveway anyway and chop that off grind that down ready for the new axle perch for the leaf springs so that's enough lying about in the rain for one day. I'm going to put a cover over Bugsy because he's going to be there for all week and I don't think the rain's going to stop. I know it's really silly putting a cover over a wet car but I have no choice. I don't want it getting any wetter. And it's not that cold. It should evaporate or whatever the term is before mould sets in. Okay, uh, I will start the strip down process on that axle. Still waiting for axle perches, so no big rush, but I can take my time, get that done. Right, folks, thanks for watching. Today was all a bit of a strip show, but it's the part I was dreading most. I really don't mind reinstalling. Right, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.